Today, we're checking out a high-end transmitter system that features a touchscreen, 10 channels, and you can use it as a controller to play video games. Today, we're talking about the brand new Fataba 10PX. For Fataba transmitters, the new 10PX is the leading flagship model for all surface applications, whether cars, boats, tanks, electric or nitro, and it features an impressive list of features and programmability, not to mention the new F4G communications protocol. The previous flagship transmitter, the 7PX, or the later 7PXR, are still fantastic transmitters, and we have one here with us to see the physical differences between them, but we'll get to that in a minute. For now, let's just admire this beauty and its 10-channel glory and buttons galore. Even on the back side of the handle, there's buttons if you want to reconnect configure the 10px for left-handed use. There are a lot of buttons on this transmitter and a lot of different button types to service all of those 10 channels and all of the buttons are programmable. First up for the buttons, we have a round on and off push button on the left side. It's not a dial and it does not turn. There are four trim rocker switches going around the wheel and they have an updated design over the 7px. There are also two new paddle buttons in this area, and they don't push, they pull, just like real shift paddles. And if you don't like them, or they're in the way, they are also removable. Now below those paddles, you'll find one last push switch underneath the wheel. Now on the left side of the wheel is one more round button, and this one is a dial with incremental notched feedback as you dial it, and it's also a push button. In the front of the 10px is the antenna and its swivel rotates to expose two ports, a USB-C on the left and a micro SD memory card slot on the right. A micro SD card can be used to save the model data and telemetry data and it's also used for loading updated software so you can update the 10px as well as SBus2 servos. The USB-C port is only used for connecting the transmitter to a PC to use the 10px as a gaming controller. Fataba claims it doesn't work with all games, but the ones that we tried, the 10px worked with no problems and no setup needed. Below those parts is one large rocker switch, and this is new for the 10px. This rocker features buttons on both sides, and they can be independently programmed and reached by your pinky finger. Just above the rocker, on the handle, is a three-position switch, and it slides up and down. The side of the handle has more switches, with two more trim rockers tucked away underneath, and they poke through to the other side for left-hand use. Just below those is one more grip switch, again placed on both sides. Now in the back of the transmitter is the one and only BPS, which stands for the Body Push Switch. And as the name suggests, you just use your body to hit it. Now on the 10px handle, it also features, just like with the 7, a vibrating unit built in. So it notifies you of various things like a low battery alarm, lap counter, telemetry alarms, and more. The main throttle and steering wheel are also very adjustable in terms of angle, throw, and spring tension. In fact, when you unbox a 10px, quite a few adjustment pieces are included to alter the configuration to your liking, including a different grip, a drop-down wheel, and an alternate larger steering wheel. Now, like we mentioned, the 10px is using a new communications protocol, and this is Fataba's fourth generation system, appropriately titled the F4G. Because of this new system, there are two new receivers to use with it, giving the 10px two versions to choose from. Now, one version includes the R404 SBS, which features an exposed antenna, and this is for nitro applications. The second version includes the R404 SBS-E receiver, and this antenna is built into the receiver for electric use only. Both of these servos are capable of HV voltage operation and feature four servo ports and one SBus port. Now at the time we filmed this, those are the only two F4G compatible receivers, but the 10px is backwards compatible. Now for instance, you can use the SFHSS systems, but it limits the 10px to seven channels. If you want to use the TFHSSSR or TFHSS systems, well then you'll only have four channels to work with. So backwards compatibility is possible, but there are some limitations. And if you want that full flavor 10 channel experience, along with the fastest response time possible, 
then F4G is where it's at. With the F4G use, you basically have four channels to work with on the receiver and one S-Bus port intended for the Fataba hubs, which are available in a variety of lengths, and they have three more ports on them. And with those ports, you can connect S-Bus 2 servos, telemetry sensors, or more hubs to daisy chain on more devices. It's a very high-end but flexible system that you can keep simple or make complex to suit your applications for whatever it is that you're doing. The only downside you could say is that it is kind of expensive to go this route because those 10 channels, in order to service channels 5 through 10, you will need S-Bus 2 servos and then the Fataba hubs to accompany them. Also, if you want to use the SR Super Response Mode within the F4G protocol, Fataba SR servos are required. If not, you can just use other digital or analog Fataba servos with one of the other modes. Fataba is very particular about you using Fataba components with their transmitters, and for good reason, because they all communicate together, which is why the F4G protocol allows you to see telemetry data, perform gyro adjustments, make SBUS2 servo programming changes, or even make changes to SBUS2 speed controller programming, all on the fly, right from the transmitter, wirelessly. Being able to reprogram certain aspects of your car's electronics while you're up on the driver's stand with your car down on the track, being able to make adjustments on the fly, hit initiate, and then it takes place and you continue driving. That is pretty powerful. Now the screen on the 10PX is 4.3 inch TFT liquid crystal display and it's touchscreen. The display buttons here on the left turn on the display with no transmission signal. The power button on the right turns on both. With the screen, it's big and in color. Brightness is not an issue, and the display is designed for inside and outside viewing with reduced glare. The main screen is like the home screen, with two touch-sensitive buttons on the bottom. The menu is pretty self-explanatory. This is the default 10px Fataba menu. The user menu button, on the other hand, is a custom menu that the user can add to and customize with only the menu items that are important for that particular model. So each time you switch to a new model, the user menu will also update to however you had it configured. And if it wasn't mentioned, the 10px has a 40 model memory. Something new here are the icons used alongside the menu list. And it's a big menu list, and we couldn't possibly go through all of this in the video, but we'll have links below to this transmitter where you can read all that nitty gritty if you want to. Now the last thing to talk about are some of the minor physical differences between the 10px and the 7px. And the first thing that I noticed right away, the first time I picked up the 10px was how lightweight it was. And I didn't think it had a battery inside of it, but it did. Both of these transmitters are equipped with the exact same battery, a Protec Lifey, and this battery is only 105 grams. Now on the scale, the 7PXR with that battery weighs 602 grams. And when we switched it to the 10PX with the same battery, it weighed in at 580 grams. So we've got a 22 gram difference, which isn't a whole lot, but it's nearly an ounce. Now for some perspective, here's my old as dirt M11X transmitter, which is really feeling its age these days, and it weighs in at over 740 grams with a battery. Now check it out. The 7 has a little larger bezel around the screen versus the 10. And in the most minor way, I measured the 10px screen to be a few millimeters larger than the 7. Below the screens, the button arrays have been updated too, with a large center home button on the 10px, with three more programmable shortcut buttons directly below it that you can program to be whatever menu you want. Another interesting difference is the screen angle on the 10px is a little softer, where the 7 px angles up a bit more lastly are the differences in the buttons the 7px trim buttons face us with the flat side but they've been turned out on the 10px of course there's no paddle switches or the cradle buttons on the 7px either 
Overall, this is easily the most sophisticated and feature-rich transmitter we've ever looked at. And those Fataba technologies that bring it together are really impressive. It's got 10 channels. Who the heck needs 10 channels? Even if you don't plan on using all of them, there are some real benefits to owning a machine like this. In RC, the car chassis, the parts, the tires, they come and go. It's the real high-end electronics that you keep for years or even decades that become the real investment in RC. Guys, go check out the Fataba 10PX with our links down below. And if you want more RC, check out these videos.